I've been in Alcoholics Anonymous for 30 years, 30. I came in when I was 31, when I was 31 years old and I haven't drank since. You know, it's, it's a huge accomplishment. And before I stopped drinking or went to recovery, a recovery program, no one out there, anybody could get me to stop my way of living. My alcoholic, addictive life, no one could get me to stop. I was a wreck. I was like a car wreck going 90 miles an hour, destroying everybody's lives, my girlfriend's lives, my children's lives. I destroyed my job, my relationship with my family, my credit. I was in and out of jail. I was just a, a wreck, a wreck of a person. But no one could ever get me to stop using alcohol. I was 150 pounds, I'm 220 now. I was totally loony, I was paranoid. I always thought the police were after me. My ex-wife was a cop caller, and every time I saw a police officer, I would think they're after me. I had creditors after me. I had people after me because I owed them money. I was nervous, I was always hyper, I was afraid. I felt lonely, I felt guilty, but I still drank, and I still drank, and I still drank. I was unreliable, but no one could ever get me to stop drinking. They would come up to me and say, you know, Terry, you have a drinking and drug problem. Maybe you should take a look at it. And I'd say, not me. You know, it's the way I was brought up. You know, it's those teachers for, for abusing me. I can't read and write. You know, it's the poor, poor way I was brought up at the home. My father was abusive. I blamed everybody else for the way I was acting, but no one could ever get me to quit. No one, because I believed that. I truly believed that, that booze was not my problem. I was just a person with a lot of bad luck and I was born on the wrong side of the tracks and that's why my life is crummy. That's why it's crummy. And even doctors, just to throw a little bit in there, even doctors and psychiatrists and psychologists told me I was an alcoholic. And I flatly looked him right in the face like, you don't know what you're talking about and get out of the office. Just walk out of the office like you guys are a bunch of crazies. I got my life in order. That's how cunning and baffling and powerful alcohol is. No one else could tell me to do something about it. I had to come to a place in my life that I realized that I was an alcoholic and I needed to do something for myself. You know, it wasn't the judge, you know, throwing me in jail or living at the mission or living at the Y or having no job or so hungry my stomach hurt. It wasn't all that stuff that convinced me. Well, maybe it was. Little ones at a time, right? Then the, they all of a sudden at the end, it's a multiple of things that happened that made me decide. But it was me who had to make that decision. It was me that had to tell myself, you know, Terry G, you're an alcoholic. You're a drug addict. You're gonna to have to do something about your life. Your life, Terry G. No one else's, your life. And I didn't even think about all the people and places and things that I cause havoc, sadness, put fear into people, anger. I was enraged when I drank. I didn't even think about that at that time. I just thought about myself and I said, you know, Terry, you gotta do something about yourself. You gotta do something about your drinking. And that was the magic moment that I did something about my, my drinking. I went into recovery and it was a hell of a, it was a hell of a time getting sober. I had a hell of a time sobering up from alcohol. I really did. I had the first five years of my sobriety was terrible, was very, very hard. No emotional wreck, very difficult, but that's what recovery is. And that's why some people don't make it. Don't make it because it's hard to be sober and to, to say to yourself that I am an alcoholic and I need to clean up my life is a big deal, but the work it takes, the cleaner act up, the work it takes is, is big. It's a big deal. It really is. It really is. But no one could ever tell me that I'm an alcoholic and I need to do something about it. Nobody. I had to come to that conclusion on my own, on my very, very own. And thank God it only took me to what I was in my early thirties. Some people never come to that conclusion. 
Some people do and they go back out. Some people come at it to that conclusion very young. And they say to themselves, I need to stop drinking. I need to stop drinking. And that's where I came. Whatever it takes, I need to stop drinking. Whatever they tell me to do, I need to stop drinking. My life is ruined. I'm too angry. I'm too hateful. I need to do something about it before it's too late. I'm going to hurt myself or hurt others because of my rage, because of my anger, because of my hate, because of my resentment to people, places, and things. I needed to do something. I really did. But if you're thinking that you can tell an alcoholic that they're an alcoholic and they need to do something about their lives, huh, good luck, good luck, good luck. It's hard. It's very difficult. It really, really is. And it took me a while, but it's the best thing I ever did for myself is to straighten up my life. Sobriety one day at a time is not, hard, not easy. It's very difficult. I need a lot of support, a lot of mental health support. I needed how to relearn how to do things in life, like get a job, those sort of things, date, dance, budget my money, look after my apartment, all those sort of things I had to relive. I mean, relearn how to do. It was nuts. Alcohol took away all of it from me. It just didn't take away my myself. It took away my car, my house, you name it. I could go on and on and on. And at the end, when I sobered up, I didn't know what to do. I really didn't. So if you're thinking on sobering up, if you're thinking on changing your life one day at a time, fasten your seatbelt because it's hard. Fasten your seatbelt because it's difficult. It really is. But if you come to that, that place, that fork in the road and say to yourself, whatever it takes, whatever I have to do, I'm going to sober up you'll get there. You will have the where, where fall, did I say that word right? The determination to get there. You really will, because I did. And I was full blown retarded, I was full blown crazy, full blown. And if I can do it, I don't like to say this, you can do it, you really can, you really can. So maybe you wanna think about that in 2013, if you, through 2023, if you wanna sober up. If you want to think about that you owe it to yourself you owe it to yourself you don't owe it to anybody else but to yourself and everybody else will weep the gifts of having you around and having you sober and your new attitude and your new behavior and your new way of life they'll love you for it they'll respect you for it guarantee it and they might not even tell you they'll just show you in their behavior okay so Happy New Year, everybody. Take it one day at a time. 2023 is gonna be a great year. You know why? Because I'm sober. That's why. And you can get sober at the same time. Just take it one day at a time. Put something down in the comments if you wanna know something or want some advice or you want me to look something up for you or help you along in your journey in early recovery. I can do that for you very, very easily. But you need to stop the booze and trust in the process, trust in the journey. Because let me tell you, it's a roller coaster ride at the start, but it's worth it, okay? So happy new year to you, God bless you, stay safe, stay sober, and just remember, together we can get sobriety. Together we are strong to live sober one day at a time, okay? My name is Terry G, thank you for stopping by. I'll see you next year, ciao for now.